Whether you're performing in a large venue like here at Full Sail Live or recording in your own home studio, it's inevitable that your cables will eventually fail on you. But if you know how to solder a cable, it can be a simple fix. I'm Brent Hughes, Course Director for Principles and Applications of Electricity here at Full Sail University, and today I'm going to show you how to solder a cable. One of our guitarists had an instrument cable fail today, so we'll be using a single conductor shielded cable to make the repair. A few of the items that you'll need include cable, solder, and connectors, of course a soldering iron, wire strippers, needle nose pliers, diagonal cutters or side cutters, and a small flathead screwdriver. It's also handy to have a few clips or clothespins around to keep the connectors and cable in place as you solder. First, take the shell and any insulator that may be involved and place it onto the cable. You won't be able to put this on the cable later once the connector has been soldered in place. Then take the cable and line it up with your connector to see just how much of the outer jacket you should be stripping off. Using the wire strippers, carefully cut through the outer jacket. You want to make sure that you don't go too far down or you'll be cutting some of the ground strands underneath this outer jacket. Pull the strands of the ground or the shield away so that you can twist them into their own conductor to be soldered onto the connector. Once the sleeve has been removed, look back at the connector again to see just how much you need to strip off of that center conductor insulation. I'll go about an eighth of an inch. Using the wire strippers once again, carefully cut through the center conductor's insulation and slide it off to the end of the wire. Go ahead and twist up the, the fine strands that are inside there so that they make a nice wire when we tend them shortly with the soldering iron. Next step is to go ahead and fill those stranded conductors with solder so that they may not fray should they be bumped along the way. This soldering iron gets extremely hot, so you'll want to be very careful with these steps. This gets up to about 750 degrees so that it can sufficiently melt the solder and preheat the conductors to which you are applying the solder. Once the conductor is preheated, fill the solder. We're going to go all the way down the ground wire so that we can form it. And then go ahead and tin the center conductor as well. Do whatever you need to do to get the work in the place that you need it so that you can focus on holding the iron and the solder with your two hands. My ground wire is too long for the connector that I'm using, so I'll snip it just a little bit short. Using the diagonal cutters, carefully snip off the ground conductor. Before soldering, on this cable, I'll take the center conductor and place it into the tip contact and then bend and form the wire and the connector itself so that everything is well organized. Using these clips, I'll set everything up so that it will stay in place for me. Again, clean the tip of your soldering iron and add a fresh dab of solder to it. Preheat the solder point and flow a little bit of solder into place. It may be necessary to hold things down with the flat blade screwdriver. Allow the solder to cool for a few seconds and then you can move on to the next solder point. I'm going to form this ground wire just a little bit so that it's nice and flat against the sleeve connection on the very bottom. Clean the solder tip, add a fresh dab of solder, and preheat the connection. As before, flow just a little bit of solder into place. This is a bigger wire on a bigger piece of metal, so we'll let this sit just a little bit longer than before. And then hold everything down with the screwdriver to allow it to cool. Once the solder is cooled, go ahead and crimp the strain relief teeth that you find on the very end of the connector. The strain relief is very important because if the cable gets tugged, and it will, then all of that stress is transferred into these two teeth here instead of into the solder points, and the cable will last a little bit longer. With that, we can slide the shell and insulator into place, and we have a completed quarter-inch connector. Last thing to do is to verify your work with a quick continuity test. We're all set. Here you go, Jordan. Thanks, Brent. And that is how you solder a cable.